welcome to our review on waves and our atmosphere. So first thing we need to understand then is what we're referring to by UV. So UV is ultraviolet radiation. Now this is an electromagnetic wave. It's got a short wavelength and a high frequency. So this means it's got a lot of energy. If you're exposed to only a small amount of UV, you can get a suntan. But if you're exposed to larger amounts, then best case scenario is that you're gonna get sunburn. It can also lead to premature skin aging and possibly even skin cancer. One thing we can do in order to protect ourselves from this UV radiation is using sunscreen. So sunscreens actually reduce the damage caused by the UV. And the way it does that is that the sunscreen is going to absorb the UV light and therefore protect the skin underneath. So when you apply sunscreen, you can stay in the sun longer without burning. Now, hopefully you've noticed that in the shops, we've got all these different sunscreens available with all these different numbers called sun protection factors or SPFs. Now that SPF tells you how much longer you can stay in the sun without burning. So the higher the number, the greater your protection. And that's down to the fact it will absorb a greater amount of UV radiation. If we've got an SPF of 30, then that theoretically means you can spend 30 times as long in the sun without burning as you could without the sun cream on. So to give you an example of that, Dave Burns, after spending 20 minutes in the sun without sunscreen, how long could he stay in the sun with SPF 10 on without burning? So he can do 20 minutes with no sunscreen. If we apply an SPF of 10, it's going to be 10 times 20, gives him 200 minutes in the sun without burning. Some humans actually have a natural protection from the UV radiation, and that's all down to the color of your skin. So if you have a darker skin color, then you're able to absorb more UV radiation at the surface, which means that the sensitive cells underneath are protected. So people with darker skin colors don't get as badly affected by the UV radiation as those with very pale skin colors. Another natural protection that we have here on Earth is the ozone layer. Now, the ozone layer is a thick layer of gas around the Earth which protects us from the highest energy UV radiation. So it actually absorbs that UV radiation before it penetrates to the surface of the Earth. However, back in the 1980s, scientists actually found a hole in the ozone layer. So because this one group of scientists has said, we found this hole, it's a problem. Obviously, scientists were not very trusting people, so we thought, okay, we're gonna check this. And more experiments were carried out to try to verify these findings. And as a result of that, they did actually verify those findings and come to the conclusion that the ozone layer was getting thinner. And the image at the bottom there shows you that thinning. So you can see the purple color there is the thinner part of the ozone layer. So it's quite a big area where it was getting thin. With all these studies that were carried out, there came a greater understanding of the cause of this problem. And what they actually discovered was that these chemicals called CFCs or chlorofluorocarbons had broken down parts of the ozone layer. Now, these CFCs were used in deodorants and any other spray cans. They were used in refrigerators and so on. So what we actually found was as a result of these CFCs being released into our atmosphere, they'd broken down parts of the ozone layer and that meant more UV radiation was reaching the surface of the Earth. So because we discovered this problem, what we ended up with was several countries working together to try to address this. So in 1987, they came up with this thing called the Montreal Protocol. And as a result of that, then CFCs were banned. So these days, when you actually buy deodorants that are spray can ones, they don't have CFCs in anymore because they've all been banned for a long time. And as a result of these actions, then the size of that hole in the ozone layer is reducing. So you can see in the picture at the bottom there, the size in 2000 on the left, and then the smaller size of it in 2012. So it is repairing itself. It's slow, but it is repairing itself so that the steps that we can take as humans, once we've identified a problem, can actually reverse some of the damage that we've done. 